Offensive coordinator, Tony Elliott. Hey, Coach, this is Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com here. Um, what, what can you say about the offensive performance tonight? Um, very balanced. Uh, I think you had 44 plays rushing and 44 plays passing. Right. Just, uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, a lot of the credit goes to, to the support staff, uh, the assistant coaches, our GAs, our uh, PDs, analysts. Man, they did an unbelievable job of, of, of helping put together a, a plan that our kids believed in, gave them a chance to be aggressive, gave them a chance to, uh, to be balanced. Uh, so a lot of the credit for tonight goes to uh, goes to those guys. Uh, I just you know happen to be the one that's, that's out front, but man, it was a collective effort. Really, really proud of those guys, and I think it trickled into the uh, to the to the players on the field. Uh, they felt confident in the plan. They felt like we had a good plan to attack him. You know, if we needed to throw the ball, we were going to throw the ball. If we needed to run it, uh, and, and once we got into the game, we were kind of able to figure out. They had two weeks to get ready for us, so we were expecting uh, you know possibly some new stuff. But once we got dialed in on what they were doing, the guys went out and executed. So just just proud of their overall performance. But the beautiful thing is. You know, we left some we left some stuff out there on the field. Uh, we left a couple of, uh, of, of scoring drives on the field, uh, which is going to be awesome to be able to show these guys and keep them hungry uh, as we move forward. Tony, this is Larry Williams uh, with TigerIllustrated.com. Uh, Miami's front four is is so aggressive in rushing up field. How much of, of of your plan tonight was sort of manipulating that aggression with delays and and and, and things like that, misdirection and all that? Right. You know, overall, man, uh, you know, tip my hat to, to what they've done down at Miami, man. They've, they've, they've done a good job of coaching those guys, changing that culture. And, and, uh, and again, they are very aggressive, very talented uh, up front, uh, do a great job of, of creating interior penetration, and then they can box you in with the speed uh, off the edges. So, you know, we had to have a plan for, for, for both aspects. We had to be able to, to control the inside guys and not give up penetration so we could run the football and, uh, inside. And then uh, we had to, uh, to slow those ends down uh, with some, some, some tempo, some misdirection, some eye candy, different things to try and slow those guys down. And I thought our guys executed it well. Tony, this is Pete at AP. Um, is Trevor okay? Nothing too seriously wrong? He obviously got up and ran off the field. But, right, uh, right. I mean, were you worried at all when you saw him down there? You know, not not worried, uh, just because I know how tough and how competitive Trevor is. Um, you know, but but from my perspective, what I was what I was told is just to have the air knocked out of him. And again, I'm sure Coach Sweeney will have more of an update if there's anything more than that. But for what I was aware of, that he uh, they just had the wind knocked out of him. Coaches, Trevor again. Um, I had a feeling that the, the tight tight ends for you would make a big impact tonight. And sure enough, three three touchdowns for those guys after no touchdowns in the last two games. Um, were you withholding some stuff with, with, with those guys for tonight, or did, is that just kind of the way it worked out with the way Miami played you? No, no, not at all. I think every week you go in with a plan trying to get everybody involved in the game plan because we're, we're very fortunate to have, you know, talented guys at every position. And, and when we're at our best, as I said before, it's when our tight ends, you know, are productive in the, uh, in the passing game. And it just so happened that this defensive structure – was going to create some situations where you could get some one-on-one -on -one matchups. And then in order to, to slow down from that previous question, uh, question, to slow down some of the aggressiveness, you were going to have to try and do some boots and nakeds and, and see, can you give a little eye candy and slip those guys in the flats? And, and that's what happened. And then in third down situations, uh, you saw last week, uh, the first third down uh, versus Virginia, we were going to, uh, we were going to Brady. Uh, we just didn't come up with the catch. And so they're a big part of what we do on third down because of the matchup in the slot. But this week, uh, you know, we, we saw some opportunities possibly with some play action stuff. And uh, we were able to hold up up front, give the quarterback time, and he was able to find those guys. Tony, this is Matt with the state. Just what's it do for a team when you have Trevor getting hit like that? He hops up, runs off the field. He, he you know, scores a touchdown. I know you don't want the penalty, but uh, scores a touchdown and, and kind of gets the guys fired up a little bit. Just what does he do for you guys in terms of that aspect? You know, when when your best players are your hardest workers, your 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 most fierce fierce competitors, it just resonates without with throughout the whole locker room and the whole team. And so, you know, anytime you know Trevor um, is out there, he gives us an opportunity to to be at our best. And you know, the young guys as well, uh, they're they're showing leadership qualities. Uh, wouldn't like would like to see him not spike the ball there uh, to get the penalty. Uh, but again, that just goes to illustrate how competitive he is. We'll deal with that. But uh, uh, but at the same time too, man, you just love the fire that uh, and the toughness that Trevor plays with. Tony, this is Gene in Charleston. I know you probably would like to look at the whole film, but can you assess how good Miami was relative to some of the tougher ACC foes you've had over the last several years? 
You know, I won't be able to, you know, to, to answer that uh, question fairly or, or accurately until I watch the film uh, and evaluate it and see where, where how they played uh, against us. Uh, but, you know, a ton of respect, as I said, to, to Coach Diaz and uh, uh, their, their entire staff. Uh, you can see just uh, since the last meetings that we've seen, I think it's done a good job of flipping the culture. Man, they're, they're very athletic. Um, and, and I think for us, you know, part of our plan was, you know, we, we've been in these games before, so we wanted to take the fight to them. And, and I felt like the first couple of drives, man, we took it to them. And then, you know, we kind of took a couple more shots and we missed. You know, you had those two drives there. We had that big third down ball that we dropped uh, on a uh, – it looked like it was a busted coverage. But nonetheless, you know, we had a guy wide open. And then we had that other drive where, you know, we hit Travis on the little uh, the little screen uh, screen over there into the boundary. And uh, we have the holding call. You know, so so we were trying, we were trying to be aggressive. So – uh, the biggest thing for us, we talk about, and, and definitely a ton of respect for Miami, but for us, we, uh, it's all about how we prepare and how we play and how we perform. Hey, Tony, Lawton Swan with Clemson Sports Talk. Um, I got in a little bit late. I don't know if you talked about it, but Davis Allen's block on ETN's run. Man. Uh, just what – that was huge. And then uh, to get the reward of the touchdown as well for him later. No doubt, no doubt. And, and, and I said this, I, I want to say maybe in my, in my preparation, uh, talking to the commentators for, commentators for uh, game day, man, but just love Davis, Davis Allen as a football player, man. He's such a humble young man, so unselfish. He loves to scrap it up in the run game, loves to, loves to just the dirty work. Uh, and, and blocks like that, you know, it's not, I mean, that's common for, for Davis, man, because he, he understands leverage, he understands how to strike. Uh, he understands how to how to roll his hips uh, through on contact, and uh, so so he's one of he's one of the guys from a football. Just if you were just building a football player, man, he's you know, he's he's close to being a model just because of his toughness, his his, uh, his athleticism, uh, and just the way that he prepares. So really, really happy for him. Really, so now that's good for all the tight ends, man. All the tight ends have had a chance to uh, to chase the end zone, and uh, that's going to be big and critical for us going down going down the stretch. Tony, Pete, and AP again. Did you? Did you like the field goal try at the end of the half, or did you try and talk Dabo out of it? No, I, that, that's that's Coach Sweeney's decision, and I don't I don't ever second guess Coach Sweeney. Um, just I mean, he's got a good feel for what's going on, and um, definitely BT's got the leg. You know, he's he's shown that in practice. Uh, so so no, I'm not gonna second guess Coach on that one. All I know is, hey, do I have three downs or four downs? If you tell me I got three. You know, I'm going on a three. If you tell me I have four, then obviously that influences what I call on third down. And he said, hey, let's get some more uh, so we can try and field goal. And uh, so, again, he hits that field goal at 61 yards. The question, the question is different. So, definitely not going to second-guess coach on that. Tony, this is Rob Gilchrist with uh, WCRS 1450 AM 90.5 FM. Uh, I know you answered this earlier. Uh, describe the toughness Trevor Lawrence showed tonight against a hard-hitting defense at the targeting call early on in the game. As mentioned, got the wind knocked out and popped right up, led that drive, got that great quarterback run for the score, the spike. Right. And what is – just describe that toughness in a word or just as best you can. Just, what you saw from the, from QB1 the best way the best way you can say it is, is the young man's got a heart of a champion. I mean, if you, if you go back and you check his track record from, from high school, I mean, the guy is a competitor and he loves the win. And he's – even though he's, he's calm and collected, man, there's a fire burning inside of that young man. You know that drives him to, to play at the level that he's played. You know since uh, since he was in high school. So so all I can say is the young man's got a heart of a champion, um, and he knows that hey we're gonna do everything we can to try to try to protect him. But it's a game of football. You're gonna take you're gonna take some hits, and man, he takes some hits, and he keeps on uh, keeps on ticking, and he doesn't ever let him you know affect him mentally, which I think is uh, extremely special. And uh, what schemes are you expecting to see next week uh, when you go to Georgia Tech? Oh man, I I, I just talking to the to some of the uh, support staff that, that kind of get ahead of get ahead for us while we're focusing on the on the current team and you know I know they jumped into some odd structure uh, maybe two games ago uh, I saw a little bit of the Louisville, Louisville game uh, uh, the other night uh, at the hotel and I saw they were in some four down structure so really don't know what to expect uh, but I do know this I know that that's a confident football team you know that just beat just, just beat Louisville um, and they're looking forward to uh, you know to to a shot at the at the Tigers and so we know we're going to get their best uh, and we'll go right back to work uh, tomorrow, trying to put together you know the best can uh, plan that we uh, that we can. And you know, one thing I'm confident in is is the uh, the coaching staff that we have on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, even though you know I may get you know majority of the credit, man, the credit really you know lies with those guys. And they're going to challenge me. I'm going to challenge them, and we're going to work together and, and and put together the best plan we can for uh, you know for our guys going to Atlanta. Tony, uh, Tony Pat, Pat, again. Sports Illustrated. Uh, just wondering with Travis, uh, how much of his ability to break tackles is lower body strength and how much is just sheer determination? 
I think it's a combination of both. I, I think if you look at him physically, man, he's built how you want running backs to be built with, with thick thighs and a, and a, and a big backside. Uh, that gives him the ability to run through tackles. But I think a lot of it is, and, uh, and I wish I knew the answer, but I'm speculating here. But I think, man, it's almost like when he touches that ball, he goes into his own. And he just doesn't believe that one person can tackle him. And he's trying to get to the end zone, you know, not for, not for selfish reasons, but just an understanding, man, that's my job. When I touch the ball, I'm trying to score. So I think it starts with, with unbelievable, you know, athletic ability, contact balance, and, and, and powerful legs. But I think it's, it's, it's a lot of uh, just sheer, sheer determination, too, that, that he's going to try and score every time he touches it. Tony, this is Maddox. This is Matt again. Just what went into the decision to have DJ and Trevor in at the same time? How, how did that kind of come about? And what are you guys hoping to accomplish? You, you know, DJ DJ is a guy that gives us something, uh, you know, from, from a quarterback run standpoint and then as a, as a quarterback. And so really just trying to get him get him involved in the game. And, and for us in, in this environment, in this climate that we're in, just trying to get as many guys uh, involved in the game early, you know, trying to distribute the ball, uh, trying to be very intentional and purposeful, making, making sure that we get guys. And again, we can't get every guy – probably the amount of reps or the touches that they, that they would like, but just being intentional and purposeful, you know, with all of our guys, you know, trying to get those guys uh, touches. So yeah, DJ's one, uh, but, but also with some, with some of the other backs, other wide outs, tight ends, just be very intentional because we'll need all those guys, you know, ready to play as we, you know, progress further in the season. Thank you. Thank you, coach. All right, they're waving me off. Appreciate you. Thank you. Clive Travis, UTN next.